this universe week three. Need that space. And trash can. Amateur hour. Neil, you owe me one. You're staying. The blur. We meet again. Hey, Sarah. Um, can you come here for a second? Mm-hmm. Take your time. What's up? I think I found some audition footage that we never used. I don't know why you put it in Sports Corner. You want, you want to watch this? Or you want me to just delete it? To call asleep an average of 22 hours a day. The end. The end. Yes, the answer is yes. Yes, just play it. Okay. I'm Colin Anderson. My name's Maggie Bassesi. Hi, I'm Alex Herz. Hello, my name's Leah Nelson. I'm Matt Coles. Hi, I'm Adam Hazy. And I'm auditioning for TV. No, the agenda. The agenda. <laughs> impressions. I can do impressions. Hey, I'm Jody Garland. Okay. Uh, I'm not a crook. Joseph Stalin. But I don't like anything that's going around here. <laughs> God. Uh, Vladimir Putin. Ah, I don't like anything that's coming around here. And... I don't. Mr. Sheffield, take out the garbage, Mr. Sheffield. Oh, something that's not Russian. I don't. Do you guys like magic tricks? Because it's a plant. Bill Cosby. Ah, with the children's and the matching and the no cake for breakfast. Hello, my daughter Sasha, and Malia, my wife Michelle. We'd all like to thank you for coming here to the White House. Donka Shane, darling, Donka Shane. You're, you're fired. You hear, you hear me? Trump. I can do Pinocchio really, really well. Darling, don't explain. You want me to go back to doing the Russian jokes? jokes? Okay, you want jokes? You unleash the, the cracker. What do you call an undercover noodle? An un... an un... an un... Okay, I forgot that joke, honestly. Picture show, <laughs> second balcony. Alright, uh, why did the, the bartender walks into the bar and he's like, uh, it's time for my shift. What do you call an undercover noodle? An Im an impost... no. Oh, it's like a specific, specific type of noodle. Was that hot in here? It's the kind you put in the, the spaghetti with the long noodles. The... Was the place we meet. Second seat. Love that street. You know, I thought it was going to be, I thought I was ready for TV too, but it's like, it's like when I look in the mirror, like, I don't like what I see. You were sweet. I have this hosting thing in the bag. It's hard out there. I'll see ya. Well, that was something. Colin looked nice, right? We lead a bunch of circus freaks. Yeah, but they're, no one's hairy, you know? Like the bearded lady, we don't got one of those. I'm, I'm deleting this. That's probably a good idea. Wait, hold on a second. What's this? Um, <laughs> that, that's nothing, you know, um, you should just just delete it with the others. It's like pretty unimportant. It's probably Adam trying to like tie his shoes again. You know how he does that. Why does it say Volpio's audition? Um, that was just a, that was a project that I worked on. Um, you can just go ahead and delete play? that. Right, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna delete. It. Hi, my name is Sarah Volpio, and I'm auditioning for Shoemaker Number Five. <clears throat> I believe in a thing called the just the rhythm of my heart. I don't leave anything called love. Just a little room in my heart. And a chance we can make it now. When our hands are goes down. I don't leave anything called Get down! I'm sorry. I'm not talking to you. Are you coming back? No. Well, 
I didn't get the part of that helps. I was originally doing the YMCA. Do you want to see that one? I'm so... Live from the Franklin Hall studio at Kent State University, it's The Agenda. And now, here's your host, Alex Hers. Thank you. Thanks. Wow, good evening and welcome to another episode of The Agenda, the only show airing on TV2 right at this moment. I'm Alex Hers. Let's get started. The Corona Fire Department in California made headlines this past week after they rescued a man who collapsed while mowing his lawn. After taking the man to a nearby hospital, the firefighters finished the job the man had started. Incidentally, 80% of the wildfire in Corona is now gone thanks to the many wildfires that were never put out. King Jim, the Tokyo-based office supply company, created a wearable mattress suit. The suit is made of nylon and polyester, and you can be worn over your clothes. What doesn't it include? The approval of society to sleep wherever the hell you feel like. Here on the agenda, we like to inform our audience with both international and local news. Just kidding. We were told we need more news this episode. So here's our reporter, Stan Bull, with something newsworthy, I think. I don't know. Uh, hey, Stan, uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Alex. Headlines overwhelm us on a daily basis. They detract from the true stories hiding between the movie times and the obituaries. Like this ad for low, low prices on beef. Now, I love newspaper beef as much as the next person, but my duty as a reporter meant I had to take the next step. Tonight's exclusive, queer steer at queerer prices. Queer steer. I don't think that's local news. I don't think that's <laughs> news at all, actually. Oh, yes, it is. Why is the beef so low? Why, why is it? I Beef's not in season. The no. cows aren't even ripe. <laughs> They're not even ripe enough to be picked yet. What's this beef doing on the market? Who put it there? What does it want? Are these cows evil le e even legal citizens? You gotta know. I, yeah, I mean, but I have to say, that's really not news at all, actually. I know, it was a slow news week. No one even got robbed. I, I just need something for the real man. Okay, I understand, Stan. It's hard out there, but beef? Beef is the best you had, huh? I used to work for the 946 News. Now, I do the Sunday Flashcast. Have you ever seen the Sunday Flashcast? I never have. No one has. We don't even have camera guys. I, I'm sorry, Alex. This was a waste no, of my time. Stand, uh, your time. I'm oh, sorry. Buddy, buddy. I'm sorry. I, that got really sad at the end, but I guess that's what the people want to see these days. Anyway, buy your beef at the store, everybody, not newspapers. We'll be right back. I see it, I see it. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Natural, organic, gluten, and BPA-free. Hi, I'm Lane Adams, and I'm a woman. I enjoy a good hanky-panky just like most women, and I want a birth control that won't let me down. That's why I choose Spud Bud, an all-natural, 100% organic birth control. Spud Bud is a one-time insertion and is effective for up to 25 years. It is clinically proven to prevent pregnancy as well as STDs, certain types of cancers, and Ebola. Really? That's awesome. Try it! Spud Bud is not 100% effective and may cause diabetes, abnormal hair growth, and heart disease. Any malfunctions with Spud Bud may result in one or more infants. Ask your doctor about Spud Bud and take back control of your life today. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey this past week, Raven Simone stated that she does not want to be labeled as African American or gay, but rather as a human who loves other humans. Raven doesn't want to be labeled at all, actually. If you take a look at her driver's license, all it says is alive. Kent State alum Josh Cribbs visited town this past week, which was apparently a big deal for all the, I don't know, baseball fans out there. TV2 saw it fit to cover the fact that he happened to be in the same zip code. Now, not to be outdone, the agenda has landed a Kent alum of their own, 2008 graduate Jason Covey. Wow. I, I, I still don't quite understand why I'm here. So, Jason, could you tell the folks at home, like, where we met? Your sheets. <laughs> oh, boy. Look at this college guy. He's back at his old stomping grounds. Just could not stay away, could you? No, I, I mean, I needed, I needed gas. I uh, got some coffee. Black two sugars. Uh, I got gotcha. you. You came back to Kent State to refuel, you know, recharging the old batteries? No, no. I literally just happened to be in the area at Sheets, 
when you came up to me and accosted me while you were buying your extra small condoms. Okay, all right. <laughs> He's joking. Two guys, Not. college friends, just messing around, huh? Hanging out with my bro Justin over here. We've never met. But we bleed blue and gold. No, no, I really don't care about Kent State University. I mean, my sister goes here, but she's majoring in, like, medieval studies or something like that. Anyways, I was just driving through here on my way to Stowe, and I needed gas. But, but you're... No, no, listen. I left here in 2008 with a degree in hospitality management which certifies me to work in an office where I do nothing related to hotels, hospitality, or people. But the, the flashes, go flashes. <laughs> I mean, I, I couldn't care less. I don't identify myself as a Kent State alum. I graduated like, summa cum butthole or something. I mean, come on, man, can I go? All right, but homecoming is coming up and Josh Cribbs was in town. That's a big deal for a school. I mean, we have an Annie Ann's now too, right? Yeah. I'm gonna go. Oh, hey, while I have the floor. If anybody, anybody, needs someone with a degree in hospitality management to come work for them, please contact me. Please. It's hell out here. Can't leave. Well, uh, I am sorry about that, folks. People from Kent State are usually, you know, so kind and, and they're giving and, you know, they're pretty personable, too. Anyway, a Japanese company has created the very first hugging chair. The chair was invented to help people feel less lonely. The tranquility chair can be yours for only $494 because nothing makes you feel like less lonely like spending $494 for a hug. Anyway, take a look. so it's kind of a packed schedule. That's wonderful. So how long have you had that? Oh, that? My mom gave it to me when my mom and dad split up. I was like four. I don't know, it just makes me feel at home, you know? My house must have felt uh, different. So she had a problem with the chair? Well, she thought it was weird or something. I just don't see it. Well, let's not dwell on that. We have more important things to attend to. Sex things. Who'd be afraid of a piece of furniture? <laughs> You're not so scary. It's actually quite comforting. Nice and warm, got a lot of love, and oh god. It's getting too tight. Okay. So. I mean, I haven't seen her boyfriend in weeks, you know, or the janitor, the neighbor guy, uh, the neighbor guy's cat, and even the replacement janitor. Son of a bitch. Kidnapping. Is that what this is about? Is there no one else here to help you? Jerry. All right, you must have gone home. But, sir, I know I'm a cop. I've been hung over for the past, like, five days. Really? No, you're right. That is wrong. Um, past 17 years. Okay. I'm bad with units. Uh, I feel like I should also add that a chair has been killing these people. I mean, I already dropped my gogurt, so I guess I'm yours for the next few days. Thank you. Okay, I mean, it's, it's just been haunting me.
What do you mean, suspicious history? Tragic fires, escaped convicts, tax evasion. You know, this did used to be an old folks' home. A lot of them died after we moved them out. I'd be pretty pissed if I was them. Oh, 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 oh. Um, there was also a serial killer who used to live in that apartment. Hey, hey, all right, I'm on to something here. Please, I just need a second. Is this the room? Yeah. Do you usually keep it pitch black like this? Yeah. New trend. Yeah, I don't think there's anything to worry about. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of here. No, please, you're the only one that believes me. Watch the door. Be yours. Some lint, socks, two socks, uh, a couple behind it. Pants, look like a janitor's pants, working man. Shirt, same as the pants. Yep, and there's a the hand. That's uh, corpse one. It's like plenty of other ones behind it. This is, uh, damn it. I need batteries for this. I don't see any. I mean, look at that couch. It's not lethal. Can everything be that friendly? <laughs> what happened? What do we do? Burn it to the ground. Have you had that the whole time? Yeah, I am a cop. I've just never used it before, so I'm a little bit nervous. Why'd you move it? What have I done so far to make you think I'm macho enough to touch that thing? Your moves are just gay. <laughs> Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. What's blue? Unpopular with scientists and too small to be classified as a celestial body. Spoiler alert, it's not my genitals. Pluto may be making a comeback. Now we're here with Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson to tell us more. Thank you for coming on, Dr. Thank Tyson. you for having me, Alex. <laughs> My first question for you is, why do you hate Pluto? Look, I, I don't hate Pluto. That's stupid. You can't hate something that is so small and meaningless, it is even even worth classifying. Yeah, but it seems the kids you know, really took a shine to Pluto. But those kids are going to grow up, and they're going to grow up into idiots, and those idiots are going to start saying other things are planets. So Venus, Mars, and Jupiter will be joined by Walt Disney World, a chewed up G.I. Joe, and a basketball, a deflated one. Wow, okay, but I mean, this is, ju it's just Pluto. I mean, come yeah, on. It's just Pluto. It's just a small chunk of ice with a moon that matches its other side. Okay, but 
It is a planet. Next, you're going to tell me we're concerning New Jersey estate. Oh, oh okay, I get it. But Pluto, I, wait. No, Pluto is not a planet. Jeez, get, get over it, you oh guy. God. Put as much effort into our program, as much as you bitching about Pluto. We could have just landed on it by now. Landed on it. You are so much more fun on TV. This is <laughs> this is just terrifying. But I, I mean, thank you for coming on. I, I appreciate it. Uh, New planets, kids. New planets. Not drugs. <laughs> wow. Maybe they'll do us one better and get rid of Uranus. That's your Neil deGrasse Tyson, everyone. All right. Um, <laughs> the popular new iPhone app, Yik Yak, is a hit among college students all across the country, but I don't really get it. So being the serious journalist that I am, I took to the streets of Kent State to find out just what it is about Yik Yak that makes the kids swoon. Take a look. Kent State University, a quiet, studious campus. That is, until something called Yik Yak came to town. How is this anonymous app affecting our school? I'm Alex Herz, and I'm here to find out. This is investigative journalism. What better way to start my quest for the truth than to sit down with Kent State students who were also Yik Yak users to see how well they were enjoying the app. All right, I'm gonna read this, uh, this Yik Yak to you and you're going to tell me uh, as a teenage person at Kent State what it means. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, need a cute white boy to cuddle and watch Netflix. Go. Um, uh, whoever was yakking that meant that they are looking for, I'm going to guess, a cute white boy to cuddle and watch Netflix with. Now, what is, you're going to have to help me out. What does uh, watch Netflix mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. Do, do you know what Netflix is? I think my, I think my mom has it. Y yeah, mm. yeah. It would okay. be laying down and watching that. Um, basically, what I'm saying is, like, this is college. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, watch Netflix. That doesn't mean what we, that, that's, that what it we means mean. more than what? that. So, what does watch Netflix even, like, what does that mean? That, that, that would mean you, did, like, can I just leave? No. All right, I'm going to read this, this yak to you, uh, and I want you to tell me as a male college student here at Kent State University if you feel like it applies to your life. All right? All right. Yeah. All right. Um, Would it seriously be too much to ask to find a girl that I can hold an intellectual conversation with and is into butt stuff? Well, actually... It's funny, I'm, I'm the one who wrote that one. So. You wrote it? <laughs> you spent your work, man. <laughs> nice. I'm just really lonely. Me too, oh my god. <laughs> Although Mitch and I had become pretty good friends, I realized the only way to really get the truth would be to take it to the streets. And by the streets, I mean the Kent State Student Center. Before I left for the Student Center, I sent out a yak of my own, promising a party. Just as I suspected, the turnout was amazing. This is when I knew that I was a great journalist. I'm here with Erica. Erica, do you know what the app Yik Yak is? Yeah, it's like um, anonymous tweeting, but it's based on like your location and stuff like that. And uh, how do you like the app? I mean, like, it's fun and stuff, but I deleted it. I mean, I think it's kind of funny to see what people will post, um, but I also think that it's kind of dangerous um, to have that kind of power, I guess. Um, being able to say whatever you want and people not knowing. Do you think it's gross for people to ask for sexual favors on, on the app? Not really, man, no. Are you all about that? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. You're all about it. okay. You feel like an idiot for using it because it's so low bar. So do you see a lot of gross stuff on there? Yeah, especially at nighttime. There's always like guys who are like, hey girl, mm. What What separates it from Twitter in terms of content? Because you can say whatever you want, nobody's gonna judge you because they don't know who it is. So, do you feel like some people abuse that? Um, yeah. Do you think if if someone is mentioned on Yik Yak that makes them cool? This is when I realized what I had to do. The only way to get the full Yik Yak experience was for someone to mention me on the app. So I decided to do whatever I could for someone to talk about me. Hey, hey, what's your name? Hannah. Hannah, you look cool. Hey, uh, let's say we get, w w w do you work for the stater? I do. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's go on a date, right? Uh, uh, if you feel awkward, you should, do you feel awkward right now? A little, yeah. You should uh, go on Yik Yak and talk about it, right? Okay. All right, thanks.
Hey, hey, what are you doing? Reading the paper? I was, I was. Reading. Yeah, oh, you think you're tough reading the paper? Guess what? I'm going to kick your ass. Um, I would not like that. Yeah, I bet you wouldn't. Tough guy, but I bet you work out, like, what, five times a week? Shut up. It's like three. Shut up. Pick it up. Yeah, you might want to yik yak about it or something. I don't even care. Shut up. I've been trying just so hard to be the worst guy I can be, but no one's said anything to me yet. Let me check again. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hold this. Oh my god. I did it! For TV2, not the news, I'm Alex Hers. I've come up with the family emergency plan. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. The long-awaited feature film Gone Girl, starring Ben Affleck, premiered this past week in theaters across the world. Many of our cast members weren't fortunate enough to see it yet, so we brought in the one who did, Maggie Bissessi. Uh, uh, thanks for being here, you old broad. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, so what did you think of, of the movie? I thought it was pretty... <laughs> it's... what? I, I mean, you are our official movie critic. We're, we're not paying you in Steak and Shake coupons for nothing. Well, I can't give away too much. I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it. Okay, okay, well, can you at least, you know, tell us kind of what it's about? Right. Well, Ben Affleck was great. And his character's wife, not Ben Affleck, was even better, smoking hot. So there's Ben Affleck, not Ben Affleck's smoking hot wife, and the detective, who coincidentally was not Ben Affleck either. I, I think my brain just fell out of my butt. So uh, yeah. forget the acting. What can you tell us about the plot of the movie? Well, at first I was like, what? And then I was like, no! And then I was like, why did I pay $14 for popcorn? And then Neil Patrick Harris shows up and you're like, oh! Uh, and then some stuff occurred. And then you're like, do you want to see it? I don't really know. I think you maybe, uh -huh. Oh, wow. Thanks, Maggie. Uh, it's, very, it's been a real pleasure. I do what I can, hers. Yeah, well, you don't do enough. Well, she's about as helpful as my mom at explaining the female anatomy. I still don't know what goes on. Well, I, I guess that's all we have for the show tonight, and I hope you learned a lot because, well, I sure didn't. But hey, if you see our lovable cast member Matt Coles around this weekend, be sure to wish him a happy birthday. Good night, everyone. spirit we're hot we can't be stopped we got the spirit we're hot we can't be stopped we're gonna beat them and bust them beat the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life take time to be a dad today all those boys are much too much the odds of this boy achieving his dream in fashion one in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 88. I am Tommy Hilfiger. Learn more at autismspeaks.org signs.